Good morning everybody and uh, welcome once again to a new week of Thoughts for the Day. Um, well, it's great to have you with us if you're joining us live this morning. If you're joining us later on YouTube, it's great to have you with us as well. Um, we're going to spend the next couple of weeks looking at the subject of hope. Hope. Uh, we all need hope in these hard times, don't we? And um, many of you will know that uh, you know me will know that I am an avid Liverpool supporter and that great anthem that is sung before every home game at Anfield has the words in it doesn't it walk on walk on with hope in your heart and you'll never walk alone and uh, it's hard not to sing that with a little you know maudlin tear in your eye uh, at different times and it's been used in many occasions hasn't it uh, from the Rob Rogers and Hammerstein uh, musical that uh, you know uh, that, that where it comes from so it's been used on many occasions at funerals and different things over the years that we're in times of trouble we need to walk on with hope in our heart that things will get better at the end of the storm there's a golden sky well and what can we base that hope uh, uh, and it reminds me of a story I guess of um, well before we get into the story I've forgotten we should pray shouldn't we let's pray and then we'll get into the story that I'm going to tell you Heavenly Father, we thank you for your, uh, this time together we have this morning. We thank you that we can have hope in you. And Lord, in these days we need to know that hope, that, uh, we, uh, that, that things will get better, that we will be able to walk on and keep moving, and uh, that we will come through the other side of things. Lord, some of it may well be about the situation we're in with the coronavirus and things. Uh, we thank you for the hope that we have. For a vaccine and for maybe better times next year for others lord it may be hope in difficult times through illness or through separation or through some other difficulty with work or jobs or relationship lord we pray that you would help us as we explore this topic that you would speak to our hearts through your word we ask this in jesus name amen okay so yes the story hope in our hearts and uh, it's quite a, a sad story really apparently there's an experiment done on rats and uh, these rats were put in two um, baths two, two uh, tubs if you like filled with water and on one in one of the tubs the rats were just left in the water and eventually they just drowned which was very sad for the rats obviously but in the other and they drowned fairly quickly but in the other one every few minutes or so somebody would reach in and grab the rats and lift them out for a few moments and then put them back into the water again and those rats kept on swimming and kept on swimming and kept on swimming for hours and hours and the difference apparently was the fact that they hoped that someone would one day reach in and bring them out and keep them out that was what the only way that the biologists could probably um, could suggest that they kept on swimming for longer and I guess that's sometimes what we're like with life isn't it it's a quite a depressing story really to start a Monday morning but that's kind of what, what, what that story was now the Bible talks about hope a lot. Christians, people who follow Jesus, are people of hope. But not hope that kind of is a vain hope, that, that we hope a bit like those rats and, and uh, a bit like the song really, Walk On, There's a Golden Sky. A lot of Disney films are all about hope, aren't they? If you whistle a happy tune, something will come along. You know, th but this hope that the Bible talks about is a very certain hope, a, sh a hope that is steadfast, and certain says the writer to the Hebrews and to focus our minds on it just for this morning we're going to turn to a, Paul, a letter that Paul wrote to the Thessalonian church 2 Thessalonians the second one and chapter uh, 2 and verse 16 and it says this now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself our, and God our Father who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace comfort your hearts and establish them in every good work and word but it's that phrase good is given us good hope through grace and that's the source of our hope this morning folks we have the grace of God now we could hope in ourselves but I think if I hoped in myself that I could hope that I could find a way through life and just hoped uh, you know with hope in my heart that's all of me then I know I'm going to let myself down I'm sure you're the same as well there's some people who are ultra confident in themselves but ultimately we will all let ourselves down because ultimately I guess there's always going to be something a hurdle that we can't get over and even if it's not in life it will certainly be in death and so 
hope for most of us doesn't come from within ourselves. Hope doesn't come from other people because they will let us down too. People can be brilliant alongside us and walk alongside us for a long, long time. And yet hope is only for a moment because that doesn't last forever. I was watching an episode of uh, The Vicar of Dibley the other night and it's from a while ago where you don't really remember when Tony Blair was Prime Minister there was a big thing about make poverty history and one of the episodes of The Vicar of Dibley was all about that phrase make poverty history and it was kept coming back into the thing in amongst the comedy was this serious note of the people who are starving all around the world and we need children particularly who are starving all around and we need to we can make poverty history and it was a big movement at the time if you remember people wearing ribbons and stickers and things like that and there's no doubt that that is really important and we want to do that and so the idea was to give those children those people around the world in poverty hope but nobody talks about that particular campaign that campaign came and went I'm sure there's still lots of us who want to make poverty history really it'd be lovely if we could but that's Again, human beings are very fickle. We move on to the next thing. There's always something else. And so people get left behind. Here, the Bible teaches us our, our, our hope is not built on human effort or human endurance or anything else. It's built on the grace of God. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ, our God our Father, who loved us and gave us eternal comfort and good hope through grace. The amazing thing is this morning that our hope doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from a God who, going back to those rats, if you like, reached into the tank where we were drowning and suffering and, and struggling and pick it with, with the weight of the responsibility of this earth and living life and dealing with life and trying to make sense of life and trying to make a way for ourselves, hopelessly swimming around and, 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 and really on, on our way to nothing. And God reaches in. And uh, the mess we've made of it ourselves, don't forget, when we're, we're running around in this mess that we've made ourselves, God reaches in and picks us out and leaves us on the dry ground and rescues us. That's grace. We don't deserve it. This God who came and took us and takes us and promises he will take us. And maybe you don't know that God yet this morning. You, you, you don't know that grace. But the promise from Scripture is that God will take us. And our hope comes from the fact that we belong to him. And in grace, it says earlier on in that verse, to th in this passage rather, to this, sorry, first of all, God chose you and to this you were called. It doesn't make any sense. Why would God choose me? Why would God call me? What does God think about me? Well, the fact is he loves us and he gave himself for us on the cross. He gave and he came through Jesus. We're going to celebrate that in a few weeks' time at Christmas. And all of that was because he loved us. And in, in, in his love and his grace and his mercy, he reaches into our lives. He takes us out of the mess we're making of them. And he places us on dry ground and says, there's your hope. There's your future. It's in me. If you stay in the palm of my hand, then I will never let you go. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You will be wrapped up in my arms of grace. Good hope through grace. 2 Corinthians 2, 16 this morning. Read it. Put it on your fridge. Remember that that's what God has given us. Our hope is not in ourselves. Our hope is not in our government, although they're trying their best. Our hope is not in something that's got some cavalry that's going to come over the, over the hill and save us. Our hope is in Christ, who has saved us, who has given himself for us, who has lifted us out of the miry clay, of the, uh, as the psalmist writes, and set our feet upon a rock and made our footsteps firm. He's given us a new song to sing, a song of hope, walking on with hope in our heart. We never walk alone because of Christ and his grace. Be thankful this morning for God's grace in your heart. Be thankful again for that simple fact that he chose you. And if you don't know him yet, this morning, through this message, through what you're hearing, God is reaching out to you in grace and wants to lift you out of your bath of trouble as it were that you've made for yourself and set your feet on solid rock and he can do that through his grace through his son jesus who came lived and died and rose again all to pay the price for our sin to make a way for us through life and death into glory with god the father good hope through grace let's pray this morning shall we heavenly father we thank you that we do have a good hope 
through grace. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to recognise that and to rest in that this morning, that whatever situation we're in, that your arms are wrapped around us and that if we know you and we trust you, that you're never leaving us or forsaking us and you will bring us through, you will carry us through. We can walk with hope in our hearts because you will one day bring us to glory with you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for that hope we have with you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. It's been a pleasure to have you with me again this, today. Hope you can join me again tomorrow at half past eight when we'll look again at this subject of hope, another aspect of it. Uh, have a wonderful day. Speak to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye.